Tika Laurent is here now in studio. She's going to be taking a look through the world's newspapers. You're starting here in France uh, this morning, Deep Tea, the Constitutional Council, scrapping parts of that controversial new immigration law. Yeah, that's right, Sharon. It's garnering a lot of attention in the French papers today. France's Constitutional Council has struck about 40% of Emmanuel Macron's controversial immigration law, deeming it unconstitutional. The parts of that law, the texts that have been uh, slashed, include restrictions on welfare, benefits uh, for migrants, citizenship for their children born in France, and migrant quotas. This is uh, the front page of L'Opinion, the right-wing paper here, noting that almost half of the text has been uh, slashed or uh, by the French C Constitutional C Council. Uh, for Libération, the left-wing paper, uh, it's their fiasco, the paper says, blaming Emmanuel Macron and his interior minister, Gérald Darmanin, uh, who, who really uh, spearheaded this, this controversial uh, legislation for Libération. The law ended its chaotic journey, much like it began its chaotic journey, in total shame. That's what the editorial says today. The paper uh, calls it a cruel and anti-humanist law that was shepherded, shepherded also by Marine Le Pen's far-right party. And indeed, uh, the, in uh, the French business paper La Tribune, that's uh, kind of the focus of their front page there. The bill in Parliament garnered uh, a lot of support from, men, uh, from the far-right, which is kind of embarrassing for Emmanuel Macron. For this reason, La Tribune, the, the French business paper, calls the Constitutional Council's decision a blunted victory for Emmanuel Macron's part. Now, the British Daily Telegraph is covering a story that the French paper Le Monde had already talked about earlier this week. Deep tea, a scandal engulfing the royal family in Monaco. What's that about? Well, it reads like a uh, soap opera, really, uh, Sharon, and you can read all about it in the Telegraph today. So this is uh, the prince, the hush money and the scandal that's rocking Monaco's royal family. Allegations about Prince Albert and Princess Charlene's finances have come to light after the couple's former accountant, Claude Palmero, published excerpts from five notebooks, secret notebooks that he had compi compiled in his 20 years as a royal accountant. It was uh, published in French newspapers uh, and essentially accuses the princess of being a spendthrift, well exceeding her 1.5 million euro annual allowance, spending hundreds of thousands of euros on redecorating her office and her holiday villa, even sending money or demanding money for her family back in her uh, uh, home country of South Africa. At the same time, she's also been accused of uh, hiring illegal immigrants as house staff and nannies uh, for her twins. Prince Albert, meanwhile, is accused of having kept a secret bank account, which he used to pay his mistresses and his illegitimate children. That's plural. Uh, the notebooks published, it must be said, uh, were uh, published by this accountant, uh, in what seems to be sort of a revenge move because he was fired uh, last year. Uh, he says he was fired because he had brought this alleged corruption to light and wanted them to curb it. Another scandal, this one in the pages of the Guardian, Deep Tea, involving the possible entrapment of South Korea's First Lady. Yeah, this story also reads like a soap opera. Um, uh, Sharon, this is in the Guardian today. It is uh, a, it dates back to a year ago, involving an, an, a Korean American pastor called Choi Jae Young and South Korea's First Lady Kim Kun Hee, who uh, met to discuss matters of engagement with. North Korea, something that is uh, an issue that's very close to the heart of the pastor. In uh, this 2022 meeting, um, just months after her husband had become president, Choi claims to have overheard a conversation uh, in which, uh, which the first lady had on the phone about sensitive um, uh, government business. Now, alarmed by what he heard, he decided to record her in secret during their next meeting, in which he gifted her with a uh, Dior handbag worth over $3,000, um, this with the aid of a left-leaning newspaper who is very critical of the government. Uh, Choi claims the First Lady is corrupt, uh, accepting a lavish gift. Supporters of the South Korean president say it was entrapment and it's designed to tarnish the electoral campaign ahead of elections in a few months. But it must be said the First Lady is no stranger to controversy. She's been engulfed in a plagiarism scandal. She's been accused of padding her resume and even manipulating stocks. This scandal, though, could well play into this electoral campaign ahead of those elections. Finally, from UTT, a Dutch woman has broken three world records in competitive 
swimming. Why is it so remarkable? She's aged 99. Yeah, that's right. She's uh, almost a centenary, Sharon. Dutch-born Betty Brussel uh, has lived in Canada for many decades. She broke a world record in her age group, it must be said, for the 400-meter freestyle last week, finishing in, under just, in just under 13 minutes. Uh, she also set a record for the 50-meter breast and backstrokes. Uh, only took, she only took up swimming in her mid-60s, so just 30 years ago, but she loved it so much that she started swimming competitively. Today, she's the proud owner of three world records and has several medals as well. Speaking of winners, though, let's give you a quick word on uh, the Australian Open. Ten-time Australian Open winner Novak Djokovic has been eliminated in the semi-finals. He was beaten by Italian player Yannick Sinner. This is from the Italian paper La Gazzetta dello Sport which hails Yannick Sinner, the first ever Italian to reach the Australian Open final. You're on Mount Olympus, the paper says, hailing what they call a generational change in men's tennis that has put an end to Novak Djokovic. Djokovic's 33-match streak. This is from the Serbian paper Allo, a tabloid. More uh, commiserations from this paper. It says uh, Novak's nightmare is called Yannick Sinner. The final is will be played on Sunday, of course. All yeah. eyes on that. Deepti, thank you so much for that. That's Deepti Laurent joining us there with our press review.